What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman of The Time Teller. So if there's one complaint I've been getting a lot lately, it's that I'm not ranting enough like I used to. And the truth is, there's a lot of kind of gloom and negativity going on in the world right now. And I didn't want to add to that by being super negative on this channel during my T3 rants. So I figured, um, you know what, I'm going to rant today. And it's going to be a true rant, but I'm going to be ranting about myself. Now I'm not trying to be a narcissist. Here's the deal, okay? People aren't perfect. People's opinions change. And there's some things I've said on this channel in the past that I'd like to revisit. Okay. So without further ado, allow me to make a few corrections. It's 1242 PM. Let's get down to business. Okay, the first thing I'd like to address, the first correction I'd like to make is about the DigiTuna hype. Okay, so uh, a little over a year ago, Seiko released the DigiTuna series and I was so swept away. I was so excited about it because again, I love the Seiko Tuna and I like G-Shocks. So if Seiko could make something to compete with G-Shocks, I may never need to wear anything but a Seiko Tuna ever again. I was wrong. You see, when these watches were first released, they were incredibly hard to find. The prices were skyrocketing. I had to source one all the way from Japan. I bought myself a Pepsi bezel Seiko Digi Tuna Fieldmaster. I love field watches. I like tunas. Hey, this could be a match made in heaven, right? Well, here's the deal. The shroud on this watch was not impact resistant resin like you'd find on a G-Shock. It was actually kind of very scratchable, very brittle, plastic and uh, it was just one big disappointment. So it was my mistake to even think of this watch as being a viable alternative for a G-Shock, but I didn't know any better. I was kind of, again, enamored by it at first. Uh, then I became disappointed and I actually ended up giving the watch away and the person who has it now is incredibly happy with it. They love it, but um, yeah, I was not super impressed. But yeah, honestly, for the price you pay for one of these DigiTunas, they're not even that technologically advanced. They don't do anything that a G-Shock DW5600 can't do for a lot less money. And again, that G-Shock's going to be a lot more tough. So just save your money and buy a DW5600. Okay, here's a fairly recent one. Uh, the next correction I want to make is about... Indigo! That's right, a very recent mistake I made. I don't know if it's a mistake, it was definitely an oversight. Um, I should have known about it before doing the review, but on that Timex Expedition Field Chronograph, I didn't realize that if you push the crown in, it would actuate Indigo! Again, that was a mistake that I needed to readdress on the channel, so I should have known about that before doing the review, I'm sorry. I was very transparent by saying that was the first Timex I've ever reviewed on the channel, and uh, I'm learning, guys. I'm learning, just like you. And, um, yeah, all hail. <laughs> all right, the third correction I wanna make on this channel is something that I've been uh, kind of coming to terms with lately, and I've been very transparent about it as well. Uh, the AP Royal Oak hate, specifically me hating on the AP Royal Oak. And I kind of pride myself on keeping my arguments congruent. And I actually wasn't in this case. And, and here's what I mean. For a while, I was sick and tired of AP just making Royal Oak after Royal Oak after Royal Oak. And I was like, come on, this is such a tired design. Get out of your comfort zone already. Show us something different. And then uh, during, I believe it was SIHH 2019, AP released and I was like, oh, oh my God, please just go back to the Royal Oak. So again, that, that was kind of an incongruent argument I was making. I was telling them that they should get out of their comfort zone and do something new. And then once they did something new, we all hated it. So really can't have it both ways. So I apologize, AP, you tried something, it didn't work. Uh, yeah, but the AP Royal Oak, I'm coming back around. I actually really like that watch, especially that new jumbo. I think they called it the Ultra Thin or something. They said it had a champagne, or they said it had a salmon dial, but it's really a champagne dial. Either way, I don't care. I would absolutely wear one. Yeah, I've come back around to the AP Royal Oak. Okay, the fourth correction I want to make officially on this channel is another very recent one, and it has to do with the Longa Odysseus. That's right, this is a very controversial watch 
watch. Now, I kind of kicked it off by being one of the first people to express my hate for this watch. And let's face it, I've actually made a list. Between the Odysseus, the Bell & Ross BR05, the Chopar Alpine Eagle, and I'm sure a few more, um, we have been inundated, oversaturated with blue dial sports watches from these luxury brands with integrated bracelets. Come on, it's just a trope that we've seen over and over and over again lately. Let's get off this hype train. Let's move on. So again, admittedly, I was one of the first people to say this Odysseus by Longa, it is tired, it is forced, it is just an ugly design. And I stand by that. I still think it's pretty ugly. But then recently, within the past couple weeks, I saw a picture of this Longa Odysseus on some leather, and it was a little bit more palatable. It was a little bit more appealing. I still think, generally speaking, it's kind of just a tired, kind of forced design. It's still not super appealing to me, but on the leather, it looks much nicer than on that bracelet. So I don't know if it's the bracelet specifically that was making me kind of want to look away, but on the leather, I don't know if I would wear one personally, but it's a much better looking watch. Still super ugly though. All right, number five. This is probably one of the biggest corrections I can make on this channel. And uh, again, I am not perfect. Um, I don't know everything about orology. I make mistakes and this is, this is a big one. So uh, a little while ago, I think it was around uh, the holidays 2019, I think it was around Christmas, I made an episode talking about Gerard Perigo, which is a company I really do like. I think they make a lot of really cool things. They're very orologically significant as far as making one of the earliest uh, chronometer high beat movements and things like that. But I made an episode around that time complaining about Gerard Perigo and uh, how they need to stop making these AP Royal Oak homages. I was like, okay, G GP, they made a bunch of really cool watches in the past. They were very orologically significant, but now modern day Gerard Perigo is just a bunch of AP uh, clones, if you will. Everybody got super upset at me for saying that, um, but you gotta recognize they make a lot of watches that look very similar to the AP Royal Oak. There's one issue with my statement though. That's right, the GP Laredo, the watch that kind of has a similar aesthetic to the AP Royal Oak as we know it, uh, that watch actually came out before the AP Royal Oak. So uh, the GP Laredo came out in 1975 and the AP Royal Oak was released in 1981. So. AP is actually making homages to the GP Laredo. Kind of mind blowing there. My mistake, for sure, my mistake. But regardless of my mistake, the fact is, this kind of goes to my overarching theme here. These luxury brands need to stop making these angular bezeled sports watches with integrated bracelets. Let's just move on. But I absolutely would wear a GP Laredo. It, my mistake, it's a good looking watch and it came out before the AP Royal Oak. I'm correcting that officially here. My bad. Dum dum, dum dum, dum dunce cap, dunce cap. Put me in a corner somewhere, and um, I don't know. Throw something at my face. Cool. All right, moving on to the final correction I want to make. We're up to number six. I know I usually do lists of five, but I've made so many mistakes in the past. So many corrections that need to be done. This is actually a correction people want me to make but I'm actually not going to make it because I'm, I'm standing by what I said. The NIST or NIST Atomic Radio Signals. Yeah, I made an episode, I think it was in 2018, uh, and everything in that episode, you can watch it, I'll link it. Everything I said in that episode still is correct today, but people are so upset. They think, they think they're like pulling one on me. They think that they know something I don't. And so people today love commenting on that episode and they're like, <laughs> it's 2020 and the atomic radio signals are still on. So joke's on you. Looks like you're not that smart after all. Well, first of all, I never claimed to be smart. And if anybody's watched like, 10 seconds of anything I've put out on this channel, you'd know, like, I'm not that smart. Gerard Paragox. But in that episode, I said that NIST, which is a government organization, uh, they run the radio signals in the US that uh, 
help out the atomic or radio signal watches. So if you have a watch like a G-Shock or a Citizen that is radio controlled, that is atomic controlled, uh, as far as like the time function goes, NIST could just be turned off at any moment if they run out of funding or if the government claims they don't need it, and then that attribute that you spent extra money on will just be useless. I said that in 2018 because back then uh, there was a statement put out by NIST that says uh, the government may be shutting off those radio signals due to lack of funding. Now, it's 2020, it seems like NIST is still using those radio signals, so all our watches are still utilizing uh, the, the, those signals for the timing functions, assuming that you have a watch with those capabilities, I'm sorry. But the point still remains that a government organization similar to the DMV or any other thing, uh, they could just be turned off at any moment and then it renders that, that attribute that you spent so much money on just useless. So I don't know why people are still commenting on that episode telling me I'm wrong and that I'm an idiot and that it's 2020 and haha, here, watching in 2020, this guy's an idiot. Well, the fact remains, they could just be shut off at any time. So what I'm complaining about is, is actually still quite relevant because here's the thing um that attribute like don't get me wrong it's cool when it works uh but to spend double or triple the amount of money for a watch with that attribute versus a variant that doesn't have that attribute it's really not worth it because you can go into certain areas where it, it doesn't work at all so your atomic timekeeping um is just kind of a gimmick I'm sorry, I know, I, I know it's very convenient when it works and it's very cool to say that you have an atomically controlled watch or a radio controlled watch, um, but all it takes is for them to be like, yeah, these aren't really necessary, they turned it off and then you've spent three times the amount of money for that stupid gimmicky attribute. It's just, it's, it's silly to me. But um, yeah, so that's my sixth pseudo correction if anything, it's just a clarification because I'm standing by what I said. People are like, oh, uh, he doesn't like atomic timekeeping, but he owns a Mudmaster. Yeah, if they had a Mudmaster triple sensor with that was cheaper, that didn't have atomic timekeeping, guess what? I would buy that watch, but they don't. So it, it again, I was comparing a DW5600E1V to the atomic timekeeping version, and they're almost over double the price. And then you look at the GX56 BB1 King G-Shock, which is solar powered, no atomic timekeeping. And then you look at the variant from Japan that has atomic timekeeping, that's over triple the price. So why would I spend over triple the price for that $100 watch, again, when I could just get it for $100 without that kind of gimmicky feature that could be turned off at any moment? It's just. I don't know. Yeah, and I know people that are smart Alex are gonna be like, oh, well, the sun could shut off at any moment, but you don't live your life in fear of that. Yeah, but it's much less likely that the sun is going to die while I'm alive versus some dumb government organization being like, yeah, we don't have the funding, so we're just gonna turn it off. I mean, come on, guys. Come on. Have you been to the DMV lately? Have you tried to get your registration done? Are those people at all very eager to help you? No. That was borderline political. People are gonna get upset with me and my channel's gonna get demonetized. I apologize. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this rant and I hope you enjoyed me just being so humble and just being so self-aware to correct myself, man. Oh, I wish I had, I wish I could just pat myself on the back, baby. But seriously, all jokes aside, uh, yeah guys, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time. I think the biggest mistake I made was saying that Gerard Perigo was making AP Royal Oak homages because again, it ends up that the Laredo came out before the Royal Oak, so my bad. But guys, if you had some fun, if you had a chuckle, then please consider subscribing. If you, if you haven't hit that subscribe button already, then come on, just hit it and uh, hit the bell icon because we come out with content, let's see, four times a week, five if you're a channel member. How do you join the channel? Well, you click the join button next to the subscribe button and it's like YouTube's Patreon. It's $4.99 a month and uh, with that you get an extra piece of content every week. It's a live stream members only every single Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific. It's a whole lot of fun, very diverse group of people from all over the place. We got crazy people from the UK. I think we got some Canadians in there. We got some 
some people from Asia, we got some Americans, we're all hanging out, we're all talking smack to each other. We are talking about, uh, let's see, cars, food, watches, obviously, video games. It's a whole lot of fun, guys. So, um, yeah, we have a Discord chat where we all hang out, and uh, the members community is crazy fun, and uh, I look forward to it every day. So, consider joining, supporting the channel. We get most of our support, by far, from the channel members, and I can't make this content without you guys, so special thanks to you! So yeah, guys, check out a bunch of watch-related gear in the links in the description below. That'll take you to my Amazon affiliate store. Go to www.thetimetellershop.com, my personal store. Number one place to get affordable vintage luxury watches serviced with a one-year warranty, hand-picked by me! Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with everyone you know so they can have a laugh. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.